Aldo Gangemi is a full professor at uh, the University of Bologna and director of the Institute for Cognitive Sciences and Technologies of the Italian National Research Council, where he has co-founded the Semantic Technology Lab in 2008. His research focuses on semantic technologies as an integration of methods from knowledge engineering, semantic web, linked data, cognitive science, and natural language processing. His theoretical interests concentrate upon the representation and discovery of knowledge patterns across data, ontologies, natural language, and cognition using hybrid symbolic, subsymbolic methods. Applications domains include the cultural heritage, robotics, medicine, law, e-government, business, and many others. He has published more than two uh, uh, um, 2050 uh, papers in international peer reviewed journals and collected books, and has coordinated research teams in eight uh, European projects. Aldo, the floor is yours. <coughs> okay, that's me. Um, can you, um, you probably raised the expectations, but okay. <laughs> so, the, um, can, you, can you see my, um, my slide, right? The red one. You confirmed that. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks. So um, I, I will um, attempt to give you um, this is a, a kind of uh, um, uh, ongoing presentation that evolved in the last uh, couple of years, three years actually. The first one I gave was at the very appearance of uh, uh, GPT-3 model that now became famous because of the <clears throat> uh, chat GPT. Uh, that is a wonderful application. While the model itself originally had was seriously flawed, now it uh, they managed to, to to fix it to a, to the extent it made a, a great buzz over all over the world. Probably all of you have already attempted to use have used it in some form. Um, and the, my my question at the time was uh, um, how this what 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 is the status that we can uh, have in terms of uh, uh, the semantic, the mathematics and the grounding of these uh, of these models that we were working on, by the way, in uh, uh, in hybrid forms. Anyway, so <clears throat> and uh, uh, during the the evolution of this, uh, I, the first talk I gave it was in the uh, end of uh, 2019, um, and actually uh, it was you know a, a long standing issue, not this one of having grounded AI, um, but for some reason it was. Uh, forgotten in the last 10 years. And when I gave the first talk, everyone was saying, oh, okay, what is this grounding issue? But, you know, grounding is <laughs> something that uh, cognitive scientists uh, were, are very aware of. No? Um, so I, uh, by the way, just to keep it short, what I will give you today is, uh, um, is not so tailored on faces, actually, sorry for that, uh, but I'm not a specialist on, uh, on, on faces specifically. Um, but I will try to give you uh, the, the, some of these uh, points that <clears throat> have been uh, evolving about this, uh, uh, the grounding of, uh, of uh, recent AI models and uh, uh, how this can be related to foundational issues that we are facing in multiple projects. So <clears throat> I start always with, with this uh, um, uh, citation from Wittgenstein <clears throat> about the fact that any, uh, in this case, it's an utterance. <clears throat> I needed some water, I forgot. Um, and the other actually can uh, uh, say something which could be schematized and considered substitutable, replaceable. And, uh, but it also cannot be replaced because it's unique in its form. And this is true, basically, of most of the things we do. So we try to, to find patterns while there is the uniqueness that we cannot renounce. And uh, actually, it's a... Uh, uh, so supposed to be uh, the, the, our own, uh, our job, you no, know, as a scientist, as a humanist, etc. Now, uh, hopefully this goes on and on. Okay, so it it creates something like a, a tension between stability and dynamics. No, so the and this sentence relates to the the, the, the quest for uh, being able to uh, represent something, to have some recurrence, that to recognize recurrence, to discover invariances and patterns related to such invariances. Um, and 
there is the issue of reproducibility versus uniqueness, as I told you, and uh, also as stability versus dynamic simultaneity. So you have things that keep changing, they're not anymore the same, but they are <clears throat> present multiple features that are simultaneously present. And it's not always the same when you try to make them computationally. Or also the problem, neurologically speaking, for example, in neuroscience terms, of uh, having supramodality in the brain versus multi multimodality. Uh, and more in general, having foundational research versus technology and the world vision that comes out of that. So, for example, until now, artificial intelligence was always seen as, uh, as something really remote or esoteric or magic. And suddenly, this ChatGPT and Dali uh, took the world by, uh, you know, as a as a big wave, and everyone is on that. Even uh, if uh, never heard, uh, never heard about uh, AI. So that all these debates are, are running and running. Uh, so the, the example I put it here are, are uh, <clears throat> and I will give you some examples actually, in part to entertain you to make things a little less uh, boring than the usual talks, but including mine, by the way, not, not, not to <laughs> be indistinguishable. But um, for example, if you look at these images, no? these are two blocks of images, um, they show, the, show uh, a dick dick. Dick dick is just a funny animal. Um, so. And uh, I asked uh, one of them, uh, one, one block is real, the other one is, is AI. And I asked uh, uh, a dick dick with four eyes. And uh, um, uh, anyone, okay, probably I can't I can see you with this uh, format, so it's uh, not easy to make that, but typically I ask people to say, what is the natural one, what is the AI one? Um, you know, the, the accuracy of the, 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 um, the picture is uh, impressive in both cases. Uh, of course, you can use uh, external features to uh, guess what is the real one and what is the, the artificial one. Um, but anyway, what, what, what really counts, you know, because often what happens with AI is that they use external features to, to guess things, even if they don't enter into the semantics of the picture. And this is one of the, the main things. Um, but just to tell you, Dick Dick with four eyes, actually the Dick Dick is famous because as a, these uh, uh, organs on the face that look like eyes, but they do different things. Um, so the the, uh, the one in the bottom is actually the four ones in the bottom are the natural ones, while the ones in the top are actually the artificial ones that do not actually show four eyes, and uh, <laughs> which is quite uh, um, amazing actually. Uh, so it's like the, in that case, the particular generative AI that produced that picture. Um, didn't really get the point that they wanted to see for eyes. And uh, there may be something in the nose of the last one that is uh, tries to ma to uh, accommodate with the, the, the organs that we see in the natural ones. <clears throat> okay, uh, so just to give you the idea, the other one on the, on the left is, uh, is called sign writing. It's a way of encoding the simultaneous gestures uh, given by uh, deaf people that we are currently investigating, we are start to investigate actually in a, in a, in a large project with some uh, uh, companies just to create something that is able to uh, automatically translate uh, sign gestures into uh, uh, sign language actually, <laughs> into uh, something that can be verbalized and vice versa. And, uh, and this is, by the way, it's a, a way that the people uh, as, uh, are really investigating themselves jointly with the uh, non deaf ones in order to uh, make the simultaneous uh, rendering that could maybe translated into uh, something computationally viable. <clears throat> so th these are, I basically finished my talk. So <laughs> this is what is under stake. So uh, are we really um, working with this? Uh, uh, what, are, what, are, what is the relevance of those patterns? How they uh, are really can be um, defended and useful independently from uh, being uh, multimodal. So I've been able to deal with multiple things, so language and vision and sound and smell uh, and more, and being simultaneous and uh, uh, being so in, uh, also supramodal, maybe in our own <laughs> understanding. So do we have actually universal semantics, et cetera, or not? So I will give you some examples of what uh, is currently doing nowadays. Um, so it's pretty funny. Let me. See. Check if I can quickly run this video without problems. So, uh, okay, yeah, that's it. 
Quer ouvir? Uh, no, 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 we can't. The best would be to have your sound uh, on and uh, and your laptop, so we can uh, catch it from your laptop. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot to to change the. <laughs> uh, but this uh, I have to. Yeah, it's a bit more difficult than that. Let me. Yes, okay, let me start that. Okay, let's stop it here. Um, so let me back to tools and the screen sharing if you go back to here next step. So basically what happens here is that this uh, <coughs> this video has been built by using multiple um, AIs uh, that created the, the words so based on a poem that created by an AI. And then also the video has been assisted by uh, uh, a GAN, which is a kind of artificial network. And uh, um, uh, so and even the, mu so the music has been uh, generated as well. So the um, this shows you know quite impressive. This is not very recent. Okay? This is something that uh, started running a couple of years ago, actually. So you can uh, use the links. I can send you the, the presentation, of course, so you can um, reproduce what I'm presenting. Um, so th this is pretty impressive. Okay, so they used GPT-3 at the very beginning, and uh, uh, and also these other uh, uh, AIs. I don't know if they exist anymore. So things are happening very very fast. So. You know, um, another one is creating images directly. You know, Dali 2 is now pretty famous. Now they can, they, you can just describe something and it provides you an output. So everyone can make it. So it's a, uh, um, uh, they can, and people and artists are, are using it to do interesting things. For example, this guy, Johnny Darrell, is a director that is trying to create uh, movie storyboards for something that does not exist. For example, he took the storyboard so use this uh, Jodorowsky's Dune from the 70s storyboard to create a, a Jodorowsky style Tron <laughs> that you can see one of the wonderful images that he created on the left and previously created this road movie, uh, horror road movie in the uh, 60s styles. So <laughs> um, this is really interesting. No? And also you can find um, natural language generation that is pretty impressive. For example, these. Uh, this chat is with uh, ChatGPT currently, and uh, um, we are now making a project for predictive justice with the Italian um, um, agencies of the government. And uh, um, uh, one of the problem is has to automatically summarize sentences, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, general, the final um, pronunciation of the, the courts. Um, and what happens is that actually ChatGPT results to be very effective and fluent on something that we deemed uh, maybe one of the most difficult things to do with uh, with language to, to summarize it efficiently, or even to summarize given a structure. Okay, in this particular excerpt, I just tried it and it works. It of course there is something that is not taken really well, especially when when you give the structure something is not immediately identified. So it seems that <clears throat> um, in this case, you no, know, having a critical mass of uh, of stuff that is ingested by a model. <clears throat> and using um, appropriately <clears throat> some uh, systems to, uh, to reinforce um, the model on, uh, on, uh, on pragmatic usage actually creates something that is pretty useful. Okay, but on, this is for the for now. It's going to be if you don't have large server factories, hardly you can provide the same results. No, so this looks like uh, is escaping the academy and going beyond that unless we managed to find some models that are really open source and we can also use data centers at, uh, at uh, um, uh, with a, enough room. So um, uh, what it interests me again and probably all of us is how much this is uh, actually uh, understanding. OK, and it is not. Um, for example, look at this. No, I took the Mona Lisa and I asked uh, GPT um, if the left hand of Mona Lisa is on top of the right hand, 
Um, now, typically when we do that, we assume the perspective of the, the subject uh, and not of the, the um, because typically hands are described with respect to the perspective of the, of the subject, of the, what do you imagine if you are yourself, you are putting yourself into, into, the, into the picture. And uh, actually, what what ChatGPT Chat GPT does is assuming that the left hand is uh, uh, that I'm saying uh, that is correct what I'm saying. Okay, uh, and then it starts adding stuff taken from some book. Uh, One of the issues about ChatGPT is that it doesn't give uh, any um, provenance of uh, what it uh, elaborates on. Um, actually, there are exceptions. So there is this perplexity AI that is pretty useful. In uh, uh, it's less powerful, but it gives provenance. Which is good. Um, so this is actually saying something that is not correct because the left hand is not uh, on top of her right hand. Um, and then also, factually speaking, you no, know, it knows a lot, and uh, knows a lot also about language. So knows that kick the bucket is an idiom. Um, but this is a bit. You no, know, I, I ask a story about Leonardo says he accidentally kicked the bucket in this courtyard in Amboise. Actually, Leonardo died in Amboise. But of course, it didn't probably didn't kick any bucket. <laughs> so out of the med, uh, of the idiomatic sense in this courtyard, if any courtyard was in Amboise. But ChatGPT doesn't make this, uh, uh, this doesn't build really any uh, uh, situation, okay, and a model of the situation, any simulation in uh, uh, in Barcelona's term. He says there is no historical evidence that Leonardo accidentally kicked the bucket, <laughs> which means no, it's able to distinguish between the, the, the idiom and no, and the literal leader, um, literal meaning, and made a lot of noise before passing away. And then he continues talking about dying. So, <laughs> so it's kind of blends, okay, the the two the two senses because it actually. My uh, my prompt there when you ask something or you put some stuff there, typically now you say you made the prompt, and uh, the, my prompt actually mixed up things a little bit because I mentioned Namboise, that is the place of the dead place. But again, you, know, you see that uh, besides its impressive ability to talk and to also know things, <laughs> which are pretty uh, pretty good most of the times, um, you know that it's not really understanding in the way humans can can do that. Uh, let's see more examples. I think it's more interesting to show examples than to explain them. Um, uh, first of all, in this case, this is a bit strong, okay? Like, uh, but this is about the, you know, the core ontology that we use. So going back to, also to probably talks that you already had. Um, so is is it the machine, the AI, able to uh, make sense of the basic foundational theories we we, we uh, you know, uh, with certain tiredness, try to uh, to understand about uh, we about us and the world, like uh, you know, meteorology, topology, uh, geometric relations, etc. Like in the uh, left and right hand stuff. So in this case, okay, this was difficult. I asked uh, uh, to overlap the two-headed goat from the collection of Aldrovandi's uh, anatomical samples. Overlapping a mutant goat in bacon style. Okay, this was you know, kind of <laughs> totally crazy. What uh, what results is uh, probably not really accurate in terms of uh, in the, um, of exactly the, these relations, but it's pretty creative. This has to do with something that I, if I have time, I will talk to you later. It's called the Moravec, uh, Moravec, don't know ever how to pronounce it, paradox. He was a roboticist and coming from Austria that um, uh, say it was in the 80s, the jointly with Marvin Minsky and others was saying uh, probably um, AI is better at doing something which we deem very difficult and it's not good at doing something which you assume as obvious. Uh, and this is, was pretty true until recently. Now I'm just wondering if this is still uh, working, but I will, we will back there later. Um, so this again, about this, uh, uh, in this case, it's a bit better. So the heads of a double-headed goat overlapping Pan's head, again, in bacon style, but the style is secondary in this case. But, um, you know, where is the Pan head? Uh, so, okay, similar to the goats, and uh, so mixes up. And if you just, uh, you know, uh, Googled it, overlapping faces, for example, and you find examples, human-made mostly, uh, of faces that actually overlap. If you try this overlap, on uh, 
some uh, uh, image generation AIs like Stable Diffusion, which I recommend because it's also open source. It's not something proprietary, at least at the moment. Um, but actually, it's not so easy to find the real overlap. Uh, via the, the one in the bottom left might look like a little bit, but you don't know actually. Okay? Um, here is a little bit better with DALI 2. Uh, it gives something that looks like a, um, may look like what overlapping much more than the one, the other one. By the way, it's not a, in the not necessarily in, this, in the way we want. No, so it looks like a, this uh, particular thing gets the basic idea of uh, what should overlap. Um, another thing about uh, basic geometrical ontologies. Um, this is the typical blocks word from uh, old-fashioned AI. A yellow block is on top of a red block that is over a green block, so distinguishing the other thing. And the, the first one is actually <laughs> pretty close, possibly because it matches some caption in, uh, in uh, existing on the web. Actually, the, the, the colors are wrong, but the, the, by Googling it, actually, it looks like the closest thing you can, you can get based, based on these topological properties of being over or on top of. And if you try with the, these uh, generative AIs, then they really don't get it. So there is no notion of being on top or over, uh, although they try with the colors to to, uh, um, to to mesh them a little bit. Also, DALI is not really good. There, there is some notion of over here, but um, it's strong in terms of uh, what the, it could generate. No, So actually, say the yellow block is on top of a red, why the red is over the yellow in the, in the last image. The others are also mixed up. So it's really, you know, it seems that it's flawed in terms of the, of the co topological coherence with respect to the world. Um, I also asked, uh, um, this is not ChatGPT, this is perplexity AI that I mentioned before. As you can see, this gives you references, this gives you provenance. Um, and if uh, how to draw a yellow block that is on top of red block that is over a green block. And, Actually, it's not uh, uh, it's not so bad. Say today, a real block on top of a block. Uh, start by placing the green block at the bottom level, which is pretty good. And then it says, then place the red block directly below the yellow block, which is okay. But doesn't. So basically, possibly the result of that is that the yellow block could be actually not touching the green block, and uh, and uh, uh, the red block is not touching the green block as expected. But it also had also doesn't give you the idea that should be really over, not really just not touching. You can just put them into separate uh, parts. Anyway, this is not uh, so bad, actually. But still, no, it denotes that there is not such a clear uh, um, conceptualization of uh, simply modeling capacity in terms of uh, or what is the what are the topological relations we are talking about. Um, I continue with examples because, uh, I frankly, I think that I give you more uh, um, um, more nuances about how these things work. Um, consider that all these works, all these um, things work by uh, creating these super large vectorial spaces uh, in, in which they put uh, signal. So this signal could be strings of natural language or could be uh, pixels from images or could be um, elements in uh, so uh, basic sounds in, in music. And uh, as someone is starting doing even uh, elements of smell, um, but they are not anyway put put together yet. <laughs> okay, there is some research, but it's pretty on the edge right now. Uh, so th this mouse in a cavity. So this is another topological issue. So I have a mouse in a cavity connected to another cavity in a milestone, and actually in this case, stable diffusion also doesn't really get it. Um, even Dali. It's not okay. The cavity is clearer, but where is the other cavity? Maybe in the second one, but you know, not not so clear really. Um, and if I ask again, perplexity AI, uh, in this case, it simply gives. <laughs> it's not possible to draw a mouse in a in a cavity connected to a cavity in a mouse, and this query does not provide enough information. This is a typical thing. No, sometimes they don't. They don't have enough cues. In order to uh, generate something that is uh, that makes sense, which is good, by the way. Okay, at least they don't try to. Um, then also, it tries to say to give you what it can give to you. you know, in this case of uh, cavities in anatomical sense, possibly medical one. 
Um, no, a very basic one. Know that you have an action. You say a robot puts a pallet on a truck. So you can ask uh, to put this pallet on a truck. And uh, uh, if you Google it, you find actually good examples of robots that deal with pallets. And possibly, you know, there is no truck, I guess, ever. Or maybe the one that is uh, the electric one within this big storage space. Anyway, if I try to uh, put it on uh, on generation, stable diffusion um, gives you pallets, but where is the robot? And the, the guy that is there, actually the guys are pretty <laughs> bizarre. You see, there is, a, there is a guy ladder with a green jacket that has no head, while the other one has two different shoes. And uh, so that they <laughs> managed to, to create something that is even uh, a bit scary, but uh, it could be even be interesting. I don't know really what happens also with the the one with the red helmet and the, the black thing there. Anyway, you know, it has to do with pallets and things put on top of something, something else, but not really a truck. Also, Dali is more clear about robots and robots taking pallets. There is no truck, by the way, there. So uh, anyway, so that that's the point. And um, more another example. Um, let's go outside of the basic topology, meteorology. Let's see, for example, uh, um, I say a smile without a cat in Cheshire Lawns. And okay, Dali 2 doesn't really get okay. It designed it, it draws a, a sort of schematic smile on uh, on a lawn, uh, which could be you not know, because there is no cat, then as can, there cannot be also anything else. So basically, it's not wrong, but <clears throat> and uh, if I try with just GPT, uh, um, then there is a reference um, to the uh, to Lewis Carroll's book, which is fine. But at the end, they say it is likely that if you have seen someone with a smile on their face that gave you the impression of the Cheshire cat's enigmatic green, but without the cat being present, which <laughs> is pretty, uh, pretty funny, actually. Um, so, no, possibly it's involuntary imperfections that um, can also be funny you know, to, to deal with. Uh, another one, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I ask something, I, I play the saxophone, so I, I like making examples like that. So could Adolf Sachs play a Selmer Mark VI baritone sax? This is impossible, by the way, because uh, at the time of Adolf Sachs, Selmer Mark VI was not yet produced. It was one century later. And uh, it says, not known to have played the Selmer Mark VI. But, but I then ask, but would he be up to it? No? And uh, it says, Adolf Sachs is not known to have played the Selmer Mark VI, so it stayed on there. But then I ask, uh, third one at the bottom, and did he play any baritone sax? And they say, Adolf Sax is not known to have played the baritone sax. So the, the point is that here they are lost in their lack of information. <clears throat> but actually, can, this cannot be true because Adolf Sax actually invented the saxophone and played for sure uh, a baritone sax. But this is not, it's contextual knowledge that could, any human could easily infer, even if probably there is no sign in a text that Adolf Sax played any baritone saxophone <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, during his life. But you can easily infer it, and they must know it. Um, if I do with the with the uh, with the images, uh, this is pretty nice actually. <laughs> it's very nice. Of course, none of that is real by Don Saxon, and uh, even if realized, that they can't be really played. They are totally messed up. <laughs> but uh, you know, they are sort of surrealist um, saxophones, and indeed, Sax himself was, uh, which is. Nicely reproduced. He was uh, uh, he used to produce also artistic um, uh, horns and uh, uh, not so far from this fashion. So it, it, this is pretty interesting. Um, while uh, Dali, yeah, doesn't get it. Doesn't know what a baritone sax is. If uh, even not of sax is not there. <laughs> okay. So um, and this is just uh, to have some other. If I go. On and on on complicating things like see wonder on steroids hugging a black mouse, and uh, it, yeah, it mixes up things. Now that, this goes to something that I care a lot about. So how to do composition? No, and um, so it likes uh, it looks like a composition is uh, uh, gathered pretty uh, nicely by um, in many cases, but when and also when blending things, so in order to create original artistic like. Uh, uh, artists like uh, uh, generated images, but uh, only if you want really the serendipity things. So, and this is goes back to the Moravec paradox. So the Moravec paradox says they are very good at blending things, and this is actually the case. But 
when you uh, do something if, in which you want actually something more realistic, it doesn't work so much. So there is even a mouse uh, from a, an Apple computer in the in the 90s. Um, okay, so, um, but anyway, on the other hand, no, they are really getting faster. So when I made my first talk, I took some uh, stuff from Gary Marcus, which is a, a relentless uh, opposer, mm -hmm. uh, opposer of... <laughs> of deep learning with many good reasons, but also, you know, it, it's becoming you know, quite uh, fixating. And, uh, um, and he discovered you know, that GPT-3 was completing these sentences in uh, totally, uh, uh, in no some uh, uh, ridiculous way. <laughs> but what happens is that, by the way, it's now fixing it, you know? With ChatGPT, I try to do that and it works. So uh, this was, oh, sorry, I forgot this. This was uh, something, the GPT-3 already at that time, so more than two years ago, it was able to do this blending uh, idea, so using you know Mark Turner's idea of uh, of conceptual blending, and it was good. So you say, come on, how some something or someone, whatever you want to call it, uh, that does so sophisticated things is, uh, uh, but fails so miserably, can actually do super cool things like those, no? And this again the moral paradox. But now, no, it's uh, uh, the goofy things are not happening anymore with that um, frequency. So now I uh, recently asked, uh, you are having also all the, basically the sentences given by Gary Marcus uh, three years ago. And uh, actually it gives me now all the ways to remove the door uh, <coughs> in, a, in a very structured way. Possibly it ingested also the how-to that exists on the web and tracked and treated it in a way that is reasonable. Also, no, I asked this one, which is um, closer to on something that was asked at the time. So I have a space suit, a swimsuit, a t-shirt, and an embassy printed Bermuda. What should I wear at an embassy dinner? And actually, it gives a very reasonable <laughs> answer to that, uh, even if it could be you know, uh, goofied by this uh, the fact that there is an embassy with a Bermuda. So it looks like it's not very, very you know, pure syntax, pure string matching. So it does more than that. It's like uh, uh, something more uh, reasonable is emerging, but we also know that it's not. It's impossible that you really understand because you know that, especially in this context, I can tell it very re in a relaxed and nonchalantly way that understanding is much more than just reading um, uh, in presence or absence uh, a multitude of texts, you know, billions like uh, it happens in this case. So other cases, you know, here this is another one, this Dream Studio, which is um, Spawn a spin-off of uh, the uh, the one that I showed before the, the um, uh, stable diffusion. In this case, for example, there is an uh, element elephant man's face touches the internal boundary again about topological things, and uh, and you have here yeah maybe the first one but not very clearly okay, and uh, this one is a sort of uh, th that one is you know, let's call it ontological grounding okay or foundational grounding. This one would be about physical or uh, geographic grounding. No? I say, me in Piazza di Spagna, Rome, looking at the fountain. Uh, okay, there was also a typo, but it's not very important for them. World style and uh, uh, Snope. <laughs> yeah, there, there is some element that could make you think about Piazza di Spagna, but it's definitely not the description that I tried. And uh, here, trying to, to make analogies. No? I say, make Giuseppe Capogrossi dream of himself in one of his comp teeth paintings, you can see them on the right. Um, here, they, he, there is some uh, uh, comb put on the, <laughs> on the uh, back of, uh, of this guy and tries actually to to, to mix also the, the face of Capogrossi with uh, some uh, combing teeth, but, you know, uh, yeah, maybe it could be a dream. Yeah, I, I don't know about the time, so sorry, yes. tell me when. <laughs> Better to conclude. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So <laughs> Thanks. This one, no, sorry, I, I want to, you know, to, to show you these things because uh, this, uh, the talk of everyone, and it's important to, to state something that is uh, uh, really uh, relevant the point. So I will uh, um, typically have uh, something much um, richer. I wanted to spend time on the on the pictures more than, uh, um, than uh, making theory, but let's go to the basic things. So, um, so I, Basically, what we have now is uh, 
something that requires the grounding of those symbols, not only in terms of uh, grounding of uh, vectorial models, but also of, uh, um, putting there some knowledge graphs, some, uh, some representation that uh, is closer to the semantics we, we assume in terms of on ontological foundations, for example. And, um, and this is uh, uh, happening with neurosymbolic models, and there are some projects going on there. And for example, you can create these uh, feedback loops uh, starting also from raw data, but using models in a very, uh, you know, proficient way to also to reuse uh, for scalability uh, what comes from these uh, uh, large language or other, uh, no, or uh, visual models, and then you can extract a schema, and then you can have a, a, a more founded model, and then you go, go on and on and continue in the loop. And this is actually taken care by project. I mentioned one of them, which is started just this month, called FAIR. It's a foundational AI project in which uh, we will believe uh, we will uh, build um, jointly with many other things because it's a very super large Italian project. And uh, um, also these grounded world models that try to to inject into this AI also uh, uh, this multimodal, simultaneous and uh, uh, founded. Uh, models of the world. And this is also no, given, uh, this based on foundational models, but I, you know what they are, I don't really spend. But this is something that is uh, in the, uh, also working for some time. I just mentioned the causal grounding by Judy Pearl. Judy Pearl is one, one of the inventors of uh, Bayesian approaches in machine learning, so it's not someone that comes from uh, strange fields. And, and he mentioned this, this was a few years ago, he said that current machine learning systems operate in a statistical or model-free mode. So when they say I, they were trained on a model, they're actually not trained on, on a model of the world, but on, on the model of the signal that they got. So to achieve human level intelligence, he says, learning machines need the guidance of a model of reality. And this reality, by the way, is really, uh, um, it's not just uh, the physical reality. It could be the cultural reality, it could be schematic reality, it could be uh, cognitive or neuroscience reality. So I had more, so I, I leave you with this, uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, with possibly, uh, hopefully, um, hungry for more, but uh, now I have uh, yeah, to, to stop. And uh, I wanted to, uh, yeah, let me go back to uh, the uh, keynote, yeah, and uh, I will put you a conclusion here. Um, so, yeah, the, the take home message is we need various types of grounding. This could be um, Situatedness in physical, cultural, social contexts, and it's related data and schema multimodality. Uh, remember that in this nowadays we really need being empirical and having a lot of data. Otherwise, you really can't compete because you can defend principles without having uh, an empirical basis for that. Uh, common sense knowledge and uh, it's starting getting in, and uh, multi-layer representations that could be independent partly from reasoning methods. So it's different to reason about facts or about perspectives of facts or interpretations or attitudes, values, norms. Now this uh, in the past was basically done at, by piling up on uh, logics of various kinds and never scaled. So nowadays we mean uh, we have, uh, we need uh, uh, easier tools to uh, embed <clears throat> these uh, multiple logical layers so that we can uh, really reason and, uh, appropriately at each layer. Uh, so we started building uh, such a, a big factual um, and linguistic and multimodal knowledge graph called Framester that is trying to do that using a basic frame semantics at the bottom. And also no, using architectures, computational architectures that are neurosymbolic so that we can have multimodal embeddings and knowledge graphs working on that. And also having neuroscience on the back. This is part of the program we have in this uh, um, uh, very large project and, uh, and more research that we are doing. So thanks a lot and I will leave you with this uh, uh, last new about uh, a spin off of Google Research wanting to make AI with uh, uh, smells, with aromas and even artificial noses. So uh, that's it. Let Thank me you so much. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hopefully I see you.